Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SewSpire.com and today I am here to show you how to sew this super sweet cupcake pin cushion. There is an exterior cupcake sleeve on this design that will allow you to tuck in your snips, your seam ripper. I thought it would also be a clever place to put your needles that you use for hand sewing. This is a weighted design, so it will sit nice on your sewing table and not roll away. Definitely a great scrap buster project. I needed something nice and easy this week because I spent a lot of time the last two weeks perfecting my knitting bag design or creative caddy I'm calling it and this tutorial is available in PDF format in my watermelon wishes Etsy shop and we use a similar technique with the piping for the lid of that project so I thought this is a great beginner project if you're interested in making that knitting bag to kind of reinforce the skills, the construction technique, but in a miniature design. So I'll put the links for the PDF in the notes for you. Without further ado, shall we get started making this sweet little cupcake? Okay, so for this project, we're gonna begin by creating the piping that goes around the top of the pin cushion. And for that, you're going to need a 12 inch by three inch strip of fabric that is cut on the bias. I will put a link in the notes to some good YouTube tutorials on how to cut on the bias in case you're not familiar. But just real quick, what the bias cut allows you to do is maximize that stretch of the fabric. So you can see how there's a lot of give there. Here is a piece of material that is not cut on the bias and it has much less give. So for the piping, it's important to cut that fabric on the bias. So you take that and then you take a like size piece of cording. This is a quarter inch cording and you're going to fold that bias cut fabric right over that cording and then put that folded fabric up on the sewing machine and use your needle positioning to adjust the needle all the way to the left. If you have a piping foot, you can use that too. I just move that needle all the way to the left and stitch as close as I can to that cording and that just encases it in the fabric. And this doesn't need to be perfect. No one's gonna see that stitch line. I'm sure with a piping foot you could get that much straighter than I did, but again, no one's going to open up your cupcake and look on the inside. Then take a pair of scissors and you're just going to clip that raw edge of that piping. And again, this clipping is going to let us shape that circle at the top of the cupcake. And it is very essential to the design. Okay, so I have that all clipped. Then my top of the cupcake is crafted from a four inch circle as is the base. And I have this really great custom fabric from Hawthorne Threads for that. Those are little snips I'm sure you can see. Super cute. And I wanna take that piping and I wanna run it along the outer edge of this top and I'm just going to pin that all in place and all of this fringe is going to hang off of the edge. So after I get that pinned I'll show you what it looks like on both sides. But you're just getting as close as you can to that outer edge of the circle. Thank you. 
Okay, so pin that all the way around. That's what it looks like from the top. And then underneath, that's what it looks like. And you'll notice that top circle is backed with Pelon 808. Pelon 809 works as well. So that's the underside and this is the top. The piping overlaps and crisscrosses there at the back of that. And I'm just going to begin sewing slightly to the left of that stitch line to hide it, okay? So nice and slow all the way around this, removing the pins as I go, and I'm just coming in right above or to the left of that stitch line. This is what it looks like. And then when that piping gets folded back and we attach the side to the pin cushion, you can see all of that stitching is hid underneath of there and no one will be any wiser. That's what that looks like. And then on the underside, all of that fringe gets tucked in there, but we have to Use the fringe one more time to attach the side. Side panel here, or the body panel, is crafted from a piece of material that's three inches by 11 inches. And that is also backed in a Pelon 808. You wanna fold that in half and align those short edges and then using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, stitch from end to end to create a cylinder. And you're gonna to wanna to reinforce with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, and then you can see I have a nice cylinder there. I want to head on over to the iron and press the seam open. Pressing the seam open is also very important because when it comes time to stuff this, we're going to remove a few of those center stitches and open that seam up. So if it's folded over, that's going to make it a little more challenging for you. So make sure you press that open. And then what we want to do is quarter this from that seam and you can probably press it with your finger and get those quarter marks, but you can also put some pins in that to mark that. And when you quarter the cylinders like this, it makes pinning on that base so much easier. That fourth quarter, the seam can be your marker for that. Then decide which end is going to be up on that if it matters to you. For mine, I don't think it's going to matter very much. And the seam will be the back of the cushion as will the portion where the piping is joined. So align that back part of the piping with your seam and you're just going to fit your little cupcake top inside of there. And as you work your way around, just pin all of that fringe. Should be sticking up. You don't want to get any trapped underneath. So that's what it looks like on the underside there. And then on the inside, you can see how we're just going to see that piping. So again, you wanna come on the inside of all those stitches. So at this point, as you move around this and stitch it in place, it's okay to start stitching a little into the meat of that cording or that piping, all right? You'll be able to sew through that no problem. You just wanna hide all those stitches 
if you're more comfortable you can work from the underside there I think it's easier to work from the top and I'm just going to start at that seam so you can take a little peek and turn your cupcake around make sure that you're happy with how that piping looks if you need to come back in and be a little more generous with your seam allowance go ahead now you need to turn your cupcake back wrong side out then you're going to take your base which is also a four inch circle and you're going to quarter that so that you have some visual guides for pinning this on and you should still have your quarter marks in your body there but the quarter marks in the base will offer you enough of a visual that you can get this pinned on kind of folding over the edge and I like to get the two cross marks pinned in place first so like north and south and then I would pin west and east And then I go back in and I pin in between there. So Southwest would get a pin and so forth. And for this part of the process, you really do need a lot of pins. Otherwise, this is just gonna shift on you and wrinkle. Alright, so now it looks like a little drum or a little poof with a lot of pins in it. So just go ahead and put this up on your machine deck and sew all the way around that reinforcing with the back stitch at the beginning and the end, smoothing out any parts that have a wrinkle as you go. And yes, you're correct. We are locking ourselves out of this little cushion and we will use this seam here to open that up after we get the base attached. Okay, I've made it all the way around and now using my seam ripper, I want to very carefully open up those center stitches in that seam and then I'm going to turn the little cupcake right side out and be gingerly with this because you don't want to separate the base or the top but if you reinforce with your back stitch, you should be able to turn this through that opening without any problems. Super cute. Okay, and then because you use that pellon, that seam just folds back over nice for you. Just shape this as you'd like. Pull out all the wrinkles best you can. Okay, now we're ready to stuff this sweet little cupcake. And the stuffing that I'm gonna use is just the polyfill, which you would use for stuffed animals and such. But what you need to do, because this base is going to take the shape of the polyfill, is you need to wait the base of this so your pin cushion isn't rolling off your table and so you can use 
whatever you like, washers or little weights of whatever sort you got. I'm gonna use pennies because they are handy and inexpensive, right? It'll literally cost you pennies to weight this pin cushion. So I'm just gonna fill my cushion base up with pennies. I did not count these pennies, but I'm guessing that there's probably 20 pennies in there, so it's gonna cost me 20 cents to weight the cushion, and that works out perfectly. Then I can go ahead and stuff the little pin cushion. So you just take small wads, and you just stuff that in there, keeping those pennies at the base, though, of the pin cushion. And then when you're happy with the shape of that, then you're gonna go ahead and hand stitch this side seam closed, all right? And for this, I really like to work with the button craft thread and a larger needle. This stitching does not have to be perfect because we're gonna sew a little sleeve that goes around this. You could just as easily use embroidery floss and make this a design element. If you happen to be a cross stitcher or a needle pointer, you, I'm sure, are going to do a beautiful job sewing yours up. I don't particularly enjoy hand sewing, so I am just going to serve the purpose and get this hole closed up, not paying much attention to how the stitches look because I'm really not gonna see these again, just like the stitches on the inside of that piping. This is a liberating sewing project for the perfectionist. Just let it go, let it go. Then I'm going to knot that at the top and just run this tail of the thread back down the underside of that. And then I'll go ahead and cut it just so it minimizes the chance of that stitching coming out. But again, there's going to be a little sleeve on top of this, so you're not going to see any of that. Okay, so here's what we have so far. You can hear those pennies on the inside. If you play with it a little, it'll give it the shape that you want. And the sleeve is gonna help define that shape as well. Still a little lumpy from the stuffing, but it is nicely weighted and it's not gonna roll away. All right, so to craft the little cupcake sleeve, you're going to need a 24 inch by three inch strip of fabric Fold that in half, right sides facing, and then stitch down those long ends and leave that short end open to turn. Okay, have that stitched up. Now I just wanna turn it right side out, poke out those corners, and then press that nice and flat. That raw edge is gonna get turned inward a half an inch and pressed flat. And the little poker stick that came with your polyfill is great for poking out those corners. And then I'll head on over to the iron and finish this off. This is what the sleeve looks like after it's pressed. So the exterior is on the inside of this fold. And then you're just going to use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end to create your circle sleeve. So now I have a nice little circular cupcake sleeve there. And what I want to do is turn this around and hide that interior seam. 
and then with the pennies towards the bottom and the piping towards the top I can slip this little sleeve on top of there. The sleeve serves two purposes. The first is it hides that stitching that we made in the seam to stuff the actual cupcake. And then the second is it acts as a little pocket of sorts and you can tuck your scissors in there and you can tuck your seam ripper in there. You could even put your hand sewing needles in here. I'm always losing mine. I could see if you're a, a embroiderer or cross stitcher, you could put those needles in there, thread it even, and tuck that under. So I really like the added functionality of that. Now for fun, if you like, you can sew a tiny felt ball right on the top of that. I'd use the button craft thread again and then it really does look like a little cupcake, just as precious as it can be. Another option is at the Michaels, they sell these four inch wool circles already cut. And then my friend Susie used her little felting needles and felted a design in the top of that for me. A felt top and a felt base would be absolutely perfect for this. If you use the felt, you can omit the piping. So that just gives you some more options. This one that I made here out of the felt was a little taller. It doesn't really look like a cupcake, but it's still cute as can be. So I hope you all enjoyed that project. I needed something that was nice and fun and simple to sew because as you may have seen over on social media, I finished my newest design, this knitting caddy, or I'm calling it a creative caddy. It has a very similar construction method as this little cupcake pin cushion, which is the reason why I wanted to do that too is because we've not done much work with the piping and you can see this lid on the knitting bag has piping all the way around it and it has a zippered top. So I wanted a small project that would reinforce this tutorial. Here's a peek on the inside. There are dividers to hold your yarn. And then on the outside, there are pockets that you can custom size for all your essentials and keep your needles and such that you're not using in those exterior pockets. I have been using this bag now for two weeks and I absolutely love it. It, it truly is perfect for anyone who knits or crochets. So again, that tutorial is in PDF format. You can find that in my Watermelon Wishes Etsy shop. I'll put the link to that tutorial and my other PDFs in the notes for you. I wanted to tell you too, this is our first PDF which I designed in two different colorways. And by colorways, I mean, I designed a printer friendly version with a white background and then I designed a viewer friendly background with, that is black. And by viewer friendly, I mean like on your devices, I think it's much easier to read with the dark background. So when you order that PDF, you'll get both and you can save them both to your device, download, view, print, whatever your preference is. It was about 50-50 when I asked our online community if they just strictly view the tutorials and sew them or if they print them out. So I thought it'd be nice to serve both populations and I designed that with the two options there. So when you get that file, you'll understand why one says light and one says 
dark. All right, so I will be back next week with another inspired project. We missed one week because I was all consumed working on that PDF for you, but I will have a fun little, it's not really a bag, but you would kind of use it as a bag project that's very different than anything we've done before planned for next week and that was a request from one of our community members so if you happen to have special requests or ideas feel free to email those to me sewinginspiration at gmail.com and until we meet again please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Have a beautiful week, everyone.